Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, Unstoppable Wasp, issue number nine. This is a freaking awesome book. Hey, you know, remember the other, the, the previous volume? It, it only made it to here and then it stopped. Maybe it was issue eight, whatever, but like it stopped. And we already talked about the next issue. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Marvel can make mistakes, man. We've seen Marvel make lots of mistakes. One of the mistakes they've made was canceling this book because it should not have been canceled. This proves it. <laughs> Just saying, man, I, I, I genuinely love this book. I'm, in fact, I'm going to get into, cor uh, not correcting, but changing my opinion about something I complained about in the previous issue. How about that? Wait for that. Right now, we got writer Jeremy Whitley, art Gary Hero, uh, la, 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 cover Stacy Lee, letters VCs Joe Caramagna, graphic designers Carlos Lau, and The Wasp was created by Stan Lee, Ernie Hart, and Jack freaking Kirby. Um... In the previous issue, I think it was the previous issue, it had to have been, uh, Bucky and Mockingbird, two of my absolute all-time favorite freaking characters, these two get into it with, they just they just do something stupid. Go back and read the comic book, go back and peruse the uh, the, the video review, whatever you wish. Uh, they, they got themselves in a sticky situation. I thought it is really dumb for them to have gotten themselves into the situation. It was just dumb. But the way it was handled in this issue, and it's very brief, I think it's only down to like one page, maybe it's only like a panel or two where they're handling bitness. Um, it, it's, uh, I understand what's happening in the book. This is not a book where we're going to get a whole lot of, you know, technical, fancy um, spy craft and stuff like that. That's just not going to happen here. That's not Jeremy Whitley's specialty. Excuse me. He's he's either he knows or he uh, researches really well certain sciences and uh, puts them together and, and retells them in this you know gorgeous story, or not. But there's a lot of silliness in the book, and there's also a lot of um, heart wrenching emotion in the book. In this issue, not nearly as much. But there are some moments where it's like, dude, I feel like you're crossing the line just a little bit. You're crossing the line with that you know, maturity subject. Meanwhile, in Co Savage Conan, uh, issue number six this week, they're talking about the devil's balls and stuff like that. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. In this issue, it's not like that. It's just, it's it's really exploring hurt. It's exploring um, pain and inner demons, you know, while at the same time having some really good, funny moments. It balances everything in this book it's just balanced so well where it's like like in a movie you know or a tv series you know you'll have funny moment funny moment here's you know move on to another place funny moment you know a couple funny moments you're like ah, ha, ha, cool and then the story just ends on like a really sad moment where you're like oh oh wow oh the episode's over Shoot, we gotta wait till next week you know like that's just really sad man wow Oh, that was good. Like, you totally manipulated my emotions. And we love that, don't we? As long as it's done well, we love when people can manipulate our emotions and make us feel happy, make us feel sad. It's one of those things that that really, I don't know. Um, no, I do know. It, 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 it's very cathartic, you know? It helps you, like, you know, if you're, whatever you're feeling, if you can go through a range of emotions by watching a half hour episode, you know, 22, 23 minute long episode of something, you know, excluding commercials, uh, and it, it, it cycles through emotions really well, it helps you to get back on your feet because it, you know, like if you're feeling sad when you start watching, if you're feeling angry when you first start watching it, if you're feeling too happy, just whatever you're feeling, it'll help you to remind you that no, we experience lots of different emotions and it, it cycles through and you feel good about yourself afterwards. And it's great to have a comic book that does that also, in case you forgot, like I'm talking about this one, uh, this title, Unstoppable Wasp. This is awesome. Uh, El Kokoi, the, uh, the boogeyman. I'm not going to say that we're going to put this on the same level as the, the, uh, the Baba Yaga, you know, John Wick. No, I'm not going to put him quite on that same level. But I feel like Whitley is kind of going for that, except on the bad guy, you know, side. So we're not trying to feel emotion for this person yet. But I do not put it past Jeremy Whitley to do that. The art in this book, as I always say, is perfect for this book. Is this like world-class art that somebody's going to come back sometime later and say like, dude, like when you look at the style, it's, you know, like it's it, it, the dynamic and the action. No. 
But, <clears throat> but I do think that people will come back and look at this and say, uh, this art would only work for certain characters and certain stories, and this is one of them. Uh, it feels good. like you can have that. It's almost like Teen Titans Go. You know, I don't know about Teen Titans Go, but like the original Teen Titans uh, cartoon, where you know you they could be regular or whatever, and then all of a sudden angry or sad chibi faces, you know, like screaming at each other. And it's like it's just a, that's weird, and you get used to it right away, right away. Great feel. This book, great feel. The art, the storytelling. Everything. Uh, David Cannon, World Wind, Whirlwind is in this again. Uh, I, why am I bringing him up? Because the one part that I would have to complain about would be the way that that ended. It wasn't quite... It, it, there, was, there was a moment here where something was said about Hank Pym and Monica Rappuccini, the, uh, the, the, the scientist supreme at AIM, uh, she gave him some information. Turns out it was it was bogus information, or was it? There's still a chance that this could still be turned into a storyline, but the idea that this wasn't expanded into a whole big gotcha, holy crap moment, that would have been amazing. That would have been truly amazing. He was talking about Hank Pym gaslighting Janet Van Dyne. And if you know the history of, of Whirlwind and the you know Wasp and Ant-Man, um, you know, giant man actually at the time, then uh, you'd understand how awesome that would be if it was pursued, if that became something of a, of a storyline in this and see the wasp having to deal with some serious crap. You know, the idea that maybe Hank Pym really did brainwash her. Holy crap. I would read the hell out of that. That would be a great plot to move on. So, so maybe he could come back and do that. You know, maybe we could bring them back and, and then, you know, there's there's evidence. Planted or not, who knows? We're just the readers. We're along for the ride. But I just think that would be awesome. I saw that. I was like, oh, please. And then it stopped. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I felt like it was a missed opportunity. But great, great storytelling in here. Great art. Everything. Perfect. Love this book. All right, guys. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.